this is Shade Shadow of Time. Um, we're doing what if, um, um, yeah, it's a good set. I think that Poison Boots the Last Wish yeah. has been out long enough now that I can um, give the coolest character from it without worrying about spoiling things for people. Um, I mean, there'll yeah. only be a minor spoiler in here anyway, and um, really that movie can't be ruined by spoilers. It's just so phenomenal. But anyway, I thought this would be mm -hmm. a good excuse to return to the series that essentially launched my Mech Armor episodes in the first place. Mm -hmm. Famous animated yeah. characters as Mech Armors, but this time specifically <laughs> famous animated villains. This episode will be narrated by three of my own original characters, but not the three you're probably thinking of if you watch this channel a lot. Swapping one of them out, and I don't have a drawing of him yet, but you'll pick it up from context. What? Instead. Let's get into it, shall we? A new Let's character? Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you Okay, want. I'm telling you, interesting. Enjoy the show. Right now. Seriously. What that bloke oh. care if those kids were being oh. trying to be serial killers for if absolutely zero yeah. justification? Yeah. Trapping a bunch of kids in a cage with a rabid gorilla. Ah, oh, don't be such a prude there, Dr. Champagne. Was all in good fun. Uh. Not all of the kids died. Vinny, please tell me you bleeped back me up on this one. Uh. Hey, I already told Harold that that uh. was a pretty messed up thing of him to do. Even I ain't did nothing that jiggy. Harold? Okay, okay. Um, I have so many questions. I. Wait, is he done? Oh, oh, I think I know. Back in my heyday. But uh. I also can't be that judgmental, you know? I did do some pretty bad stuff back when I was just making and selling mech armors. I mean, heck, one of my best buds back in my world was a supervillain who came to me for a uh. mech armor he could use to kill his nephew. Well, what a coincidence. I killed my nephew, too. Oh, of course you did. Vinny, please tell me you're not about to launch into a bunch oh. of stories about things you've done that's gonna make me lose respect for you. I think at this point your level of respect for me is pretty locked in where it is, handsome. <coughs> anyway, my buddy Hayden Unson is mm. this guy I met after he came to me looking for a mech armor to take out his nephew, who is this superhero kid with super strength and durability and whatnot. See, the kid's dad, uh. Hayden's brother, was the leader of one of the top superhero teams in my world, the Olympiads. And Hayden was sort of part of the team, but they kind of uh. pushed him to the side and um. made him do paperwork on the villains that they took down. Making sure they went to the right prison and whatnot. Uh, Hayden wasn't too thrilled about that, so he eventually <laughs> starts making this plan to free some of the worst yeah. villains his brothers and other siblings ever put away. So he's been making up this plan for years and years, and the Olympiads ain't noticing nothing. But that's when Harrow comes onto uh, the scene. This is Hayden's nephew, and the kid is doing some more street level hero work to try and prove to his dad and the world <laughs> that he deserves to be on the team with the big dogs. And this kid is a tank. His career is going from zero to hero just like that, and Hayden is uh, worried that the kid is going to get in the way of his plans before he can let loose the uh, big bad villains. Well, you know what I'd do there is I'd let loose some of the smaller tier villains, less conspicuous ones, you know, and pay him a bit to go and kill the kid. Maybe even give him some power enhancement. See if Hayden could do that without, you know, kicking up too much noise and drawing attention and whatnot. <laughs> well, you certainly think like a super villain, Harold, because that's what he did. But none of the villains that you were sending out <laughs> the kid was doing much. The kid um, was too tough for that. So that's when he comes to me. Hayden wanted a mech armor of his own mm. to fight in so that when he lets loose the big bad goons, he can help him take out Harrow. What's a good... We already run in some of the same circles, and I do him one... Wait, what about poison? Wait. Oh, no. What about try to poison him since his... Uh, give him some food. Poison. Oh. Do I keep doing the move? Or, yeah, I would think of it. So, I make a um, yeah. can choose power suppressing flames. They would totally take away the kid's powers, but they would weaken him up pretty good. So, Ooh. You new, but Put him in. A superhero. Wait, no, no. They could go in a house that went on fire with this stuff, then show up. Up and there. You're not only made for armor anyway, but you flipping leaned into it and made sure he could do it? That sounds like some right good customer service yep. there, Benny. <laughs> he paid you well for that. Actually, not as much as you'd think. Aiden is a real good salesman and negotiator himself. He convinced me to give him a crazy discount. But, to be fair, he uh, also threw in a bunch of useful information for me on how I could avoid ever getting pinched by the Superhero Corrections and Placement Foundation. They was the folks who'd imprisoned the big bad villains that he was gonna let loose. <laughs> he knew they in a workings pretty well. Also, every time he came to me to get an update on his suit, he'd bring some moussaka or baklava or something like that for us to eat. I became a big fan of Greek food because of that guy. Well, I certainly understand that. I've been to a bunch of...
Asia dimensions where the other food in those universes doesn't amount to a hill of beans compared to the Greek food, and that won't sound cocky when you've tried their souvlaki, my friend. Hey, yeah, uh, that, Harold, you'll do a flip when you try to Greek father dip. Oh, don't oh. I know it. You'll feel like a hero when you get what? your teeth into a hero. Your mouth will feel freaky once you've had some <laughs> tzatziki. You're talking freaky. Um, you better write that. Yeah. Of course I'm talking freaky in a good way. Hey, yeah. you stop bonding with the guy that killed kids and get back to the story? Um, all right, all right, anyway. I wrote the suit the best I could. <laughs> her okay, okay. I kind of like villains more than the heroes. I wonder if I could shoot Topi. Mini to Kirker. I was a... didn't go as Aiden planned. He mm. busted out the villains, used his suit to weaken the kid and the Olympiads, but the kid still managed to use his smarts to take down the villains till he got his strength back. Then he saved his folks, and Hayden got taken down mm. himself. He wasn't stuck in jail for too long, but that was the end of his big plan. Though I wouldn't be too surprised mm. if he's got something else cooking now. I haven't checked in with him for a while. But mm. give that guy a year or two, and he could be running the criminal underworld. Huh? Yeah, great. Hmm, Eddie's. Alright, wait a minute. That actually sounded kinda like the Disney version of the movie Hercules from my world. I would The guy, Hayden, he didn't happen to have, like, grayish, bluish skin, did he? He did not, but funny enough, I actually did once make an armor for the henchwoman of this villain guy who had blue skin. They came to me because she was from a family of superheroes, but had pretty weak powers compared to her siblings. They wanted an armor for her that could really amp up her abilities. She wasn't a hero anymore, neither, by the way. She worked for this blue-faced guy fighting off heroes that came after him. You know, trying to stop his doomsday devices and whatnot. Doomsday devices? Why would you want to help out someone making doomsday devices? You lived on that planet too, didn't you? If you blow it up, what was going to happen to you, you clown? Relax, the dude's tech never actually worked. He was a real goomba. No idea how he talked this hench lady into working for him. Because she was the opposite. I mean, she didn't make tech or nothing, but she was a crazy acrobat and could fight like a demon. She didn't even seem to like working for this dragon guy, but for whatever reason, she did. Dragon. Yup. There it is. Guessing this lady, or at least the suit you made her, could generate some kind of green flames or something huh. like that from the hands. Yeah, she um, could make green plasma come out of her hands naturally, but mm. her actual power didn't really do that much. So the arm I made her cranked it up so it could burn hotter than a blowtorch, um. and she could do crazy impact damage when she shot it. Okay. Um, All right, so this lady is uh. just like this character Shigo from a show called Kim Possible in my world. How the flip is it that every single armor you ever made is somehow based on a movie, a show, or game from my world? Uh. Well, Benny here probably subconsciously has a stronger mental link to the Akashic Records than most folks. Which means, even if he doesn't realize he's doing it, he can access images and thoughts on every being and creature that ever existed, and ever will exist in the multiverse. Lots of overseers... I got really interested. Yes. And other folks make stuff similar um, to things in other universes without realizing they're doing it yeah. because of that same reason. Akashic. What? Oh, what that is. Oh, well, um, yeah, so. Pretty funky to mm. know, but, Harold, this ain't mm. the time to be dropping big law bombs like that on yeah. folks. I'm in the middle of a story here. Right, yeah. sorry, Benny. Go on. Uh, yeah. I'd really like to stay on what he was just saying. Uh, Some other time. Come on. I'm sure we won't have to wait months and months and months before we get back to what Harold was saying um, there. Anyway, so I was souping up the mech for this lady. Yeah, I'm trying to take in a sec to tell her that she could probably go solo with the tech that I'd made for her. But turned out this lady had a score to settle with the gal who's always taken down the Draken guy. Benny, was this another super villain struggling to take down some kid that was giving him trouble? Sounds like he got a bit of a pattern going here. Yeah, yeah, but this mm. time I was sort of on the right side of the conflict. I mean, I was also on the wrong side of the conflict. See, turned out the gal they was having a hard time with was someone I had already made tech for. They didn't know it was the case, but this red-headed gal had sent her tech guy to me to build her a mech armor with all of her best weapons stuck into the thing a couple months before. So, yeah, I did make this green lady a mech that was pretty killer, but then I went to the red-headed gal and offered to upgrade her suit with stuff that would specifically protect her from what I did with the green lady's armor. Jeez, well, at least you did sort of the right thing by giving the kids some free upgrades. Oh, I don't know, Dr. Champagne. I'm willing to bet you ten big ones that he didn't do those upgrades for free. What are you talking about? He just said he offered to... He didn't. 
okay. Benny, please tell me you didn't make this kid pay for something that was gonna save her life against a weapon that you made for her enemy. <laughs> it's a good hey, move. I didn't show you a picture of this armor yet, did I? And take a look at this. God bless this shrouded sheep, the knee sharp. Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. Hey, folks. Ultimate hmm. timeline, Benny Shabby is still on the run from the cops for trying to sell those posters to people. But you know what? Since I'm on the, since I'm on the run anyway, I'm gonna sell you even more posters. I'll be up in this episode. Get some of the posters on the Popcorn Studio <laughs> store too. And what the heck? They coming after me anyway? You know what? I'm also gonna try and sell this hoodie right here. You see this 100% pure counterfeit hoodie? But it sure don't look like a counterfeit, huh? It's got real nice colors to it. Let's keep this going. I'm also gonna advertise the Popcorn Studios Patreon. Let's go. Well, I'm back. Yeah, let's. Yeah, you can get hmm. a weekly bonus podcast series. Get art and inks a day before an episode comes out, and get hundreds of other inks and high res mm. of the history of the channel. All of that stuff is yeah. in the description, and you can check. They're coming! They're coming, and I gotta go check out the posters and the. Oh boy! You know what? Let's try this in reverse. A movie just came out in my universe called Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Mm. Astoundingly good for a sequel that's coming out a thousand years too late, and there's this guy in it named Big Jack Horner. He's based on a nursery rhyme, looks like a mutated purple baby, runs a pie factory, and is a real bad bloke. Have you ever made an armor for someone that sounds like that? I didn't, but I do got a guy in my world that's just like that. He ran this big dessert business he inherited from his parents that made the cheapest, most processed garbage you ever did eat, but paid people off to get his food um. labeled as healthy and whatnot. Um. Worse still, underneath all of that, he ran a criminal <laughs> empire that had the street name the Plum Plum Gang. I never worked for the guy, because he had a real bad reputation for stepping all over the folks he worked for. The kind of guy that would shoot a puppy in the face just to get ahead if it would help. Yep, that blatant chick sound. Sounds like a real irredeemable monster. Hey, that's a real good way to put it. Anyway, I never made a mech for him, but he was once hunting after this superhero in my world mm. that was also the target of this bounty hunt I did make an armor for. Oh, I can see where this is going. Of course. Was this guy like a Grim Reaper sort of bloke? Some kind of wolf person that seemed like the embodiment of death? Well, that's a bit of a stretch, but I guess given the weapons this guy requested, he did have a bit of a menacing Reaper sort of vibe to him. Yeah. Oh, you two just pray you never meet the actual mm. Reaper. That lady even freaks me out. She can wipe out all life in the universe uh. just like that if she gets her hands uh. on that world overseer. I feel like we really gotta sit you down at some point and just have you talk for oh. 15 to 20 minutes about everything you know about oh. the multiverse, Arrow. Yep. But for now, I'll tell you yep. about this Lobo guy. Yes. See, he was already a pretty killer bounty hunter, but he was going after this hero, same one Jack Horner was after, who seemed like he could never be killed. Oh. He was this carefree dude who cheated death so many times it seems like he just couldn't die. The bounty hunter had some kind of personal grudge against the guy and wanted an armor to make sure he could get him. He actually told me that I was on his list of folks to get too, but that he'd scratch me off the list if I made him a suit. I didn't like his attitude, obviously, but I did like the request he had for the suit. He wanted these scythe sort of blades that could pop um. into the forearms, but could also detach and clip together to become a double-sided strike <laughs> sort of weapon that he could hold and spin around and whatnot. Plus, yeah, as you said, he wanted the thing to have a little bit of a wolf sort of look to it, and I was keen on having mm. another crack at a wolf kind of mech, because the mm. last one I built was... You know, it was pretty cool looking, but I figured um, I could go even yeah. more wolf looking this time. Do it mm. that much better. Was this another one of them times where he was also helping out the hero guy that he was after? Nah, I never made a suit for that guy. I did make one for a buddy of his, though, this lady who wanted a cat-like armor. Pretty sure she was mixed into this whole thing with Horner and Lobo and the hero guy, but I wasn't really paying too much attention mm. after I got the armor built. Especially when I saw the Lobo guy wearing a big wooden cape over the armor that I made him as he ran out of my garage. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was trying to keep my business under wraps to keep off the feds' radar and yeah. obviously avoid paying my taxes, but when I make a mech armor, I want the person to be proud of the thing and showing it off. I understand that completely. You put all that work into the thing just to have it hidden from the world would make me madder than a wet hen. You wouldn't put a tarp over the Mona Lisa, would you? Exactly, Harold. Thank yeah. you. You know, sometimes I think you might not be such a bad guy after all. Really? Harold, how many kids would you say you've killed in your life? Oh, well, uh, I guess that would depend. Do you mean specifically times when I've been targeting kids? Or would city that I've helped destroy count there, too? Oh, um, right. yeah. You make your point there, Shambles, but at least 
down yeah. arrow here yeah. make me look a little bit better. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. To be totally honest, I yeah. am slightly hesitant to send people back to the very first uh. famous animated characters of Mech Armor's episodes because I really did not have the Benny Sharp accent down back then. Yeah. In and out of it so much that those episodes. Um. Yeah. This is Shade Shadow X. Uh, please, sorry. Sorry about the noise. Um. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>